Welcome back to the Retro Perspective. One of the things that comes up daily in Silent Hill fan communities across the internet is the absolute hatred of Silent Hill Homecoming. Bizarrely, it seems that most people feel like the follow-up Downpour is the superior game. They obviously haven't seen my review of Downpour. Anyway, I've been lurking on forums and Facebook groups, getting into often heated debates with these Silent Hill cultists, and asking them to answer one simple question. What is it, actually, that makes Silent Hill Homecoming such a bad game? And I have to say, I'm not particularly satisfied with the results. The second, most common critique is that the combat is bad, and yeah, that's actually a valid argument. Homecoming has a pretty weird combat system that relies heavily on a clunky dodge move with extremely poor visual and haptic feedback to let the player know that they're doing it right. It makes fighting an unsatisfying affair. However, let's be real, it's not as if the prior Japanese developed Silent Hill games were famed for their satisfying combat. At the very least, Homecoming tried to do something different, and if you give it enough of a chance, the dodge mechanic becomes easier to deal with. I think the main problem is that the inclusion of such a mechanic does not bode well for the horror aspects of Silent Hill, and Homecoming definitely feels as if it's forcing the player into a lot more combat with the monsters, when you might otherwise have run away in the other games. But what is the number one complaint that I've come across when speaking to the fans? Well, that's a topic I want to cover in this video. The number one complaint is that Pyramid Head is in the game. Do I even believe that Pyramid Head should be in Homecoming? No. I personally wouldn't have included him, if only because the original monster designs in Homecoming are phenomenal and do not get the credit they deserve. The team could have easily come up with an equally iconic baddie that followed you through the game, but I'd agree with the common theory that Konami wanted to capitalise on the already established fan favourite. In terms of the argument though, that Pyramid Head's inclusion makes the game bad? Well, I asked several fans, what is it about this that makes the game objectively worse? Many people believe that it goes against Silent Hill lore, and I pressed further on this. I asked for real examples from Silent Hill 2 that suggest that Pyramid Head might be exclusive to the character of James. The people I asked came to one unanimous conclusion that Masahiro Ito said so on Twitter. Masahiro Ito is the artist who worked on creature designs for the first few games, and from what I can gather from his Wikipedia and online presence, has been on the dole ever since. I mean, technically he's a freelance artist, but I said I was a musician when I was unemployed, so same difference really. Either way, the guy is part of the old guard of Japanese game development, who have well and truly forgotten what made their games good in the previous decades. He may have designed Pyramid Head, but I sure as hell don't trust him to understand the first thing about the lore of Pyramid Head presented to the player in Silent Hill 2, a game that the majority of developers nowadays would look at and say, this isn't what our audience wants, how boring, now let's make a Silent Hill Battle Royale game, and while we're at it, let's get Pyramid Head put in Fortnite. で、even ignoring my misgivings about Ito, I subscribe to the philosophical concept, Death of the Author. You probably already know what that is, but I didn't until recently, so I'll briefly explain. Coined in an essay by literary critic Roland Baths, 
death of the author is the idea that once a creative work has entered the realm of popular culture, the author's intention for the work is no longer relevant. Whatever the author, artist, developer or musician intended during the creation of a piece of art, well, the people viewing that art might have a different interpretation or a different emotional reaction to that piece, and that's not really a bad thing. Baths argues this is especially important when critiquing creative works, as thinking about intent, at least if it's subconsciously or dishonestly, introduces a clear bias, one that is irrelevant to the quality of the work itself. This philosophy is held also by such people as David Lynch, one of my favourite directors, who goes so far as to refuse to give his opinions on his own work, or respond to fan questions or theories, because he believes that would ruin the fun of fans actually thinking for themselves. This is the main reason that when people have fed me this because Masahiro Ito said so line, I've responded with Bullshit. That's how I feel. Total fucking bullshit. Death of the Author applies perfectly to the inclusion of Pyramid Head in Silent Hill Homecoming, because for the life of me I cannot find anything in Silent Hill 2 that outright tells the player that Pyramid Head is something that only James could see, and my discussions on the forums didn't produce any such evidence either. That's not to say an argument can't be made, there are a couple of things in the game that can be considered indications that Pyramid Head is exclusive to Silent Hill 2 and the character of James. The main premise of Silent Hill itself is that the town has a supernatural power to manifest elements of the unconscious mind. Obviously this means that Pyramid Head manifested from James's subconscious. Inspired by the Misty Days painting in the Historical Society building, that stuck with him as a memory of time spent with his wife. On the other hand, there is nothing to suggest that once something has been manifested in Silent Hill, that it remains exclusive to one character, or that other characters can't see it. In fact, the lore of other Silent Hill games proves the opposite to be true. Harry, Heather and Henry all encounter manifestations of a lesser and Walter's subconscious, not only their own. The existence of the Misty Days painting and other symbolism related to the Silent Hill cult, such as Walter's recollection of the Red Devil and his pyramid-shaped hood, suggests that similar figures to Pyramid Head could be manifest, if not the same. Masahiro Ito himself has stated that Silent Hill plays a role in the appearance of the creatures within it, and that the town can manifest them for different people, this is just one of the many contradictions from Ito on the subject. He also planned for a cancelled Silent Hill game to begin with a scene featuring Pyramid Head and Valtiel, which would have gone against his insistence that Pyramid Head was just a figment of James's imagination, and dispute the theory that Pyramid Head is Valtiel, but just how James sees him. The idea that Pyramid Head exists as a manifestation of James's guilt and need for punishment is of course completely justified in Silent Hill 2's lore. In fact, James even states as much in the final showdown with the two spear-wielding Pyramid Heads. So what is it that I personally believe justifies Pyramid Head's appearance in Silent Hill Homecoming? Well, if you have to ask that, you obviously haven't paid much attention to the story and themes of the game. A lot of people criticise Homecoming for trying to rip off Silent Hill 2's story, and yet one particular point of Alex's story is strikingly similar to James's. Perhaps they don't realise that this very point is also a justification for Pyramid Head's appearance, as guilt and regret are the number one themes of this game, not only for the main character, but almost the entire supporting cast who are perhaps even more important, and in my opinion, elevate the story of Homecoming massively. Listen to me, Mom. Start telling me everything you know about this. I, I don't know what that is. Stop lying! I'm tired of it! I know all about Silent Hill. You don't know anything about Silent Hill! I know Dad went there. He went to go fight something. 
Each one bears tremendous guilt for the actions they took as part of the Silent Hill cult, and in the end, it's Alex's father who Pyramid Head is hunting. As a member of the Order, he will have been familiar with the Misty Days painting and the red hooded robes of the priests, and the fact that Pyramid Head previously manifested as a symbol of guilt and punishment only goes to bolster the idea that the town of Silent Hill itself chose to bring back Pyramid Head. Of course, if you believe the subjective opinions of Masahiro Ito more than your objective experience of playing the games, then you probably agree that it was actually Konami's marketing team that brought Pyramid Head back. Or maybe Ito will change his mind and say that Pyramid Head is Valtiel, or that the UFO ending was canon. That is the danger of hanging on the words of the author, because it is far more fun to imagine how or why Pyramid Head returned than to have to accept the only real objective reason he could have ever existed in the first place, because an artist drew him and it looked cool. I prefer to look to the games for answers, and that's why I believe that the Silent Hill fanbase would also have been much better off subscribing to the concept of Death of the Author. I've been Jake of The Retro Perspective, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.